And the plantain and Johnny cake turn up. It's so good. So we have some boiled food too. For all who need about boiled food, we have some boiled dumplings. We have some banana, green bananas. And we have some dashing. So I'm gonna take this out of dashing, yeah. So far, I've tasted the Johnny cake and the planting. So I'm going to do the dashing as well with Aki. I love dashing. It's funny because like sweet bread. You just have a food, didn't appreciate them while I was in Jamaica. And now it's so hard to get them. Appreciate it so much every time I get the chance to eat this stuff. Just gotta eat all you can, you know? Mm -mm -mm. It's your girl Marceline here with another video and today we're making authentic Jamaican breakfast slash dinner. So guys, don't go anywhere. Just hit that subscribe button if you're new over here. Turn on your notification by hitting the bell and just go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because it's gonna be amazing, all right? So, um, for our authentic Jamaican breakfast, we're gonna be starting off with our fried dumplings. In my last fried dumpling, in my last fried dumpling, or as some people call it, Johnny cake. Yes, um, I made it from scratch with the all-purpose flour, the baking powder, but in this video, we're gonna be using the self-rising one. So if you're gonna make Johnny cakes and you are making it from scratch, you can go ahead and check out my other video. All right, we're gonna be we're gonna be making aki and saltfish as well. Yes, guys. We're gonna be make we, we have we also have our green bananas, our sweet potatoes. We have our plantains. Yeah. We also have dashin. Yes, guys. In some in like Asian countries, they call it a different name. I don't remember what, but I got it from the Asian store and we have our scotch bonnet pepper we have more ingredients but i'm just showing you the basic all right so guys let's cook all right so guys i'm starting off with my johnny cakes and the reason for that is i like to put down my dough to rest for at least two hours before i fry them and guys if you try that method trust me you're gonna see the difference in your johnny cakes put it down overnight or like for two hours before you fry them and you will see the result a better result all right so i'm going to be using one teaspoon of salt and also i have two teaspoon of butter and one egg and i'm going to be using some warm milk and i'm, and I'm going to gradually add my milk until i have my desired texture and i know someone is watching and saying egg yes because the last fried dumpling video that i made someone messaged me on instagram and asked me if she have to use the egg you don't have to but for me the eggs give the eggs give the the johnny cakes a nice crunch and a beautiful color okay so for the milk no you don't have to use milk you can use plain water or if you want to use milk and you don't like whole milk, you, you can go ahead and use your almond milk as well. Whatever you, your heart desire. All right. So as I said before, I'm just going to gradually add my milk until I have my desired texture. And that's what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to cover it and put it down to rest for at least two hours. So as I previously said, my dough was resting for two hours, but because of the power of editing, yes, I move it up because I know somebody may, might have come here just to see the fried dumpling. So I am putting everything in sections. So yes, it was resting for two hours. Now I have my 
fried dumpling and this is how i am going to put them yes yeah, some people call them fried dumplings some call them johnny cakes whichever it doesn't matter to me so i just pinch and tuck yes pinch and tuck into a small ball and then i'm gonna add them and as you can see when i was testing my oil everybody tests their oil different for me i just pinch a small piece of the dumpling and i drop it in the oil and if it floats up that means the oil is too hot if it flows up right away that means your oil is too hot if it sinks a little and then take it time to float up with small bubbles around it then you know you have the right temperature for your dumpling and they're not going to burn and they're going to fry perfectly all right look at that isn't that beautiful guys yes and they tasted really good now guys moving on to my boiled dumpling i'm just adding some flour and some cornmeal for some people in the house they don't eat cornmeal dumplings so i have to make a separate just with just plain flour but i am just going to show you the cornmeal dumpling so basically i just add my flour and then add my desired amount of cornmeal add my salt not too much salt and then i just gradually add my water until i have the texture that i want just like the fried dumpling just different ingredients so guys just moving on to my dasheen yes my mother don't like to see when i peel it this way but it's for my own protection when i peel it this way it protects me from getting caught with the knife okay so i like to slice them and then i just remove the skin and that's it voila very easy and it works for me so i don't know if this is not how you peel it then that's fine but i like to do it this way so guys um growing up in the caribbean you know that when you're peeling green bananas you have to grease your hands you use some cooking oil and you grease your hands and you also grease your knife so that you don't get stained by the bananas so yes that's what i'm doing here all right guys so you have two i have two different ways that i peel banana and this one is the easier one for me because the way that i'm doing it now i just find all the the crease and i use my knife to core it yes so it's more of a visual tutorial so i don't know how to explain it to you but just watch and see what i'm doing i just look for all the crease that the banana have and i use my knife to core it and then it's easier for me to remove the skin instead of giving it one core and then using my fingers damaging my fingernails to peel it all right so yes as i said before it's a visual tutorial and you guys can easily see what i am doing So as you guys can see, the skin comes off really easier when you do it this way instead of damaging your fingernails. Yeah, it comes off really easy. So that's what I'm going to do here. And if there's any small pieces left back on the banana, then I can just use my knife to remove it. So yeah, easy peasy.
so guys um as you can see i have my bananas in water yes if you don't know when you are peeling ground provision you have to keep them in water if you're not putting in them in the pot right away so yes i have them in some boiling water so that they don't change color all right so now i have my water ready and it's boiling so i'm going to add my salt i'm adding a tablespoon of salt and then i'm going to put in my cornmeal dumplings guys a lot of people when they're cooking food they like to put their ground provision first and then their dumplings last but remember cornmeal takes a while to cook yes and i want my cornmeal to be cooked thoroughly so yes i am going to add my dumplings first yes so if this is not how you do it i'm fine with that this is how i do it because i want my dumpling to have like a 15 minutes head start so that my cornmeal can cook properly and another thing is i like to add my bananas and, and my ground provision on top so that they don't overcook yes i don't like when they're overcooked and then they break in half i don't like that so that's my reason for doing this so as you can see i'm using the same pinch and thuck method as the same as i did as my johnny cakes So my dumplings have been boiling for 15 minutes. Now I'm going to add my dasheen and my bananas there. They cook very easy. So yes, I like to add them on the top of the pot and then I remove them when they're done. So here I have my codfish or saltfish, whichever one you call it. Yes, I have it here. I wash it first and then I soak it in some water to just to remove, um, to reduce the salt. Now I have my boiling water ready and I'm going to add my codfish in there. Now for the ackee guys, you know on the tin they told you that it's already cooked, but I still like to cook mine for at least five minutes just to make sure. Yeah, I don't overcook it, but I like to just strain off that brine that it's in and then I cook it for five minutes yes guys and this is like my favorite ackee guys it tastes like you just pick it from the tree it's really good the linseed market i'm not doing a commercial for them or anything yes this is not a paid this is not a paid advertisement but guys trust me the linseed ackee and if you can't get the linseed one then the grace one will do as well they both taste amazing but my favorite is the linseed so now that my salt fish is boiled, I'm just going to remove the skin and remove the bones and get it ready to go in my pot. So yes, I'm finished picking my salt fish and look at that guys. It's a, that's about half pound of bones and scales. <laughs> so now I'm uh, moving on to my ground seasoning. I have my scallion or spring onion or green onion, whichever one you call it in your neck of the hood. And I also have my white onion. I have some bell peppers, which is quite optional. I just add it to my ackee and salt fish just because it doesn't take away the flavor from the ackee and it also add a nice color. So I have my bell peppers and I also have my scotch bunny pepper here. What else I have? That's about it. Your ackee and salt fish don't need a lot. For some people in the house, they don't eat ackee. So I'm going to cook some salt fish separately for them. And the only thing I'm going to add different in that is tomatoes. So 
so guys my pot is hot and ready i'm gonna add some oil to both of them and guys i am also going to put it on medium heat just because i don't want my ground seasoning to be to burn you know i don't want my onions and my skeleton to burn so i am gonna put it down on medium heat and then i'm gonna saute my ground seasonings So guys my saltfish is ready to go in the pot yes and then i'm gonna add some black pepper to that and some aki over the next pot i have my my um seasoning being sauteed as well and now i am going to add my tomatoes yeah i like to saute the other ones first and then i add my tomatoes last right before i add my saltfish so i'm just gonna allow my tomatoes to go ahead and just simmer you know give the pot a nice rich red color and then i add my sawfish to that so guys here i am adding my aki and one person in the house don't eat sawfish so i have of course i have to cook up some aki separately for her yes without sawfish so she don't eat sawfish but she loves aki like my house is so weird full of weird people yeah so that's what i have to deal with here my aki and sawfish is ready guys yes moving over to my other part i'm gonna add my sawfish i bring it over so that you guys can see much clearer so guys now i am moving over to my ripe plantains yes and i am just peeling them i am going to cut them you can cut them however you like i'm just going to cut them in some slant yeah because it kind of look more uniform when you do it this way so i'm just going to slant them slice them and add them to my oil of course you see that amount of oil that i plant that i fry the dumplings in I'm going to remove some of that oil and use that same frying pan to fry my plantains because you can't fry plantain in a lot of oil. They will boil instead of frying. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to move over to my sweet potatoes and show you how I make my sweet potatoes. So guys, when you're frying ripe plantains, guys, listen to me carefully. Don't even turn your back, all right? Don't even turn your back. They will burn. <laughs> even if you think you have it on medium heat, guys, just don't look away when you're frying plantains. The moment you look away, that's when they burn. so guys i don't like to boil my sweet potatoes yeah i don't like to boil them i like and uh, you know how my grandmother used to roast them but i'm not roasting them outside i'm roasting them in the microwave i'm just damping this paper towel and then i'm going to wrap it in the damped paper towel and add them to my microwave and then i'm gonna press potatoes yes depending on how big your potatoes are they will take longer you might have to give them two goals yeah you may have to press them twice press potato twice so for these size potatoes i think i have to press them twice for them to really roast the way they should yeah and they were so delicious you know back in the days when your grandmother used to roast potato that's how they taste trust me so now they are ready and i'm just gonna cut them and show you guys so guys my oldest daughter is here from new york and she's the one that brought the aki and the saltfish for me and my other daughter is home from university for the weekend so this was their request and my other daughter requests the um the aki she's at work so she's 
I know she's anticipating to come home for this. And she also requested the roast potato. So they're like super excited and they can't wait. Hey guys, so yeah. So mom wants us to taste test the breakfast. I'm Tashika, y'all know me already. This is DK. DK, and we're gonna be tasting this. Obviously we're sisters. We're, and plus Marcy's daughters. So yeah, we're about Marceline. to taste this food. Marceline, you have a name, plus Marcy. Not on this channel. Oh. <laughs> Either way, I mean. Wait guys, we have to show you like some of these food. Like, look what at it. What it looks like. This looks amazing right now. Let me tell us it smells good. Okay, so. So. You got the Johnny cake, you know. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this ackee. I'm gonna be considerate that there are other people that are gonna want some. For who is not Caribbean, sawfish is what we call codfish. If you go to a store, just look for codfish. So this is ackee and codfish. And you see, this is a planting. We already start taking off the plate. Smell good. If uh, you never tried this before, you're missing out. You're oh. Planting on the Johnny cake. Yep, Johnny cake. Mm. Okay. Guys, we have to go away because mm -hmm. this tastes so good. It's so good. So, if you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up because you know, for Empress Marcy, she's been working hard. Marceline, whatever you want to call her on this channel, she's been working hard on her YouTube videos, and this food is turned up, like we said. So go ahead and give her a thumbs up if you like this video, if you like us, if you wanna watch us eat more. Please make sure you share Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you can share it. Please make sure you share this um this video. Mm-hmm. Guys, let me tell us how this food tastes good. We'll have to go just go away. Later.